So uh, good afternoon and welcome to this professional talk slash uh, alumni sharing. It is my pleasure today to introduce our speaker, uh, Ms. Deng Zhijun. Um, she is alumna of our MA program, and she is actually one of the best students of her cohort. And she received the, the uh, High Academic Performance Award after graduation. So Zhijun is now working as a trademark executive in Dickens, the largest independent law firm in Hong Kong. And there she has assistant, assistant partners in handling numerous overseas trademark cases for clients from both domestic and international backgrounds. And while working in the law firm, she is also pursuing a part-time legal degree at HKU Space to further her knowledge in this field. And before she entered the legal industry, she has worked as a part-time translator with her translations published in per periodicals such as Learning Publishing and Serious Review. And she has also worked as a full-time accountant at, at Guangzhou Metro Group. So in this talk, she will introduce her current role as a trademark executive in a law firm to offer a glimpse into the legal career in Hong Kong, to share why she wanted to switch to the legal industry, and finally, to give some very practical tips on job hunting. So without further ado, please join me in welcoming Ms. Deng Zhijun. Thank you. Thank you so much. Now, um... Before this talk, uh, let me show my great gratitude for the Department of Translation in organizing this seminar. And I will try my best to do this sharing better. And okay, now let's get started. Our topic today is stepping out of the comfort zone, exploring careers in the legal market. Sorry. Um, okay. um, my talk today will be roughly divided into four parts. In the first part, I will let you have a general overview of myself and also my jobs as a trademark executive in Deacons. And then I will share with you some of my reasons why I would like to work in the legal industry. After that, I will also share some of my ideas about how the translation I learned in campus can help me in my workplace. And finally, I will give you some tips on job hunting and interviews. Those are the tips that I have gotten from my past experience. And hopefully you can use those tips in your future careers. Now, a little bit information of me, and I believe you have already got my name. I'm Deng Zhijun or Deng Ziguan, depending on whether you are a Mandarin or Cantonese speaker. I had an education background in accountancy. I graduated from the South China Normal University uh, with a bachelor's degree in business administration dated 2018. And then I had about two years working experience in Guangzhou Metro Group as a finance executive at the property department. And at that time, my job was to handle the budgetary management. So every time I, uh, every day I cooperated with my colleagues from different, different departments, and I gathered information from them to produce the financial report and financial statements for the purpose of management. And unfortunately, during that time, I find myself actually were not very interested in dealing with numbers. So that's why I quit my job. And I spent almost about one year in preparation for my career switch from finance to translation. During that time, and luckily enough, I got a few chances to work with my teachers from my undergraduate university. I helped him to handle some of the translation work of the academic articles and help him to publish some of the translation in the international magazines at Serious Review and Learn Publishing. And later I got the chance to further my studies in translation at CUHK. I managed to graduate with a master's degree in translation dated 2022. And then I got a chance to work in Deacons, Hong Kong. And Deacons is one of the biggest international local law firm here. And I got a chance to work as a trademark executive 
at the intellectual property department. During my work, I find that if I want to proceed further in law, it's not enough to just simply gain working experience in my workplace. So I further my knowledge by pursuing a part-time course program at Hong Kong Youth Space uh, in the year 2022 to 2023. And from that experience, I learned a lot about the legal studies. I believe you may wonder, how come is it that a student without a legal background can work in the law firm? What does she do in the workplace? Well, to answer this question, um, I think I have to go down to the first fundamental concept about trademark. What is the trademark? From the definition defined by WIPO, trademark is actually a kind of intellectual property rights and it is protected by law. It's a sign capable of distinguishing the goods or services of one enterprise from those of the others. So to put it more simply, a trademark is actually a kind of symbol, a sign. It doesn't have to be a word, a logo. It can sometimes be a kind of device, a sound mark, or a kind of smell that is so unique that our client can recognize this symbol at the first glance of it. And the company will use this sign in the process of selling their goods and services to the customers. And that's why the enterprise would like to gain certain kind of protection by law. So this is how the trademark comes into being. How does the trademark become valid? In general, it becomes valid through registration. The company usually find a professional agent and a law firm here. The company will instruct the law firm to help them to register this potential trademark in different jurisdictions. Jurisdictions here is not totally equal to countries. It is referring to the official power that has the independent jurisdiction uh, that can make the independent judgment and that can produce their own legal principles. And we call it the jurisdictions. So this is what deacons do in this value chain. We act as an agent to act on behalf of our clients, the companies, to help them to register their potential mark, like assign a kind of word mark, sound, or device, or logo in different jurisdictions. The workflow of a trademark goes like this. When a new client comes to our firm, we usually conduct a background search against this client. We want to conduct the conflict checks and the AML checks here to ensure that we are actually eligible to represent our client in taking the legal action. And then after passing all these legal background search, we will proceed after confirming with the clients with the trademark search. In this procedure, we will conduct it, uh, we will conduct the availability search to estimate the proportion of success to register a mark in a certain jurisdiction. After finishing all these procedures, we will proceed to file the application. That means we will apply the mark and submit it to the registry in that certain jurisdiction. During this process, we will help the client to prepare the filing instructions and send it to the registry. And we will also help them to draft legal documents. For instance, in some jurisdictions like Macau SAR, they require a power of attorney to show that the lawyer is capable to represent client in taking action. And that's what we do in helping clients to draft those legal documents. And after that, we will also follow up with the process of application of the mark. We will report to the client from time to time, and we will monitor the whole uh, status of the trademark to make sure that we will proceed successfully to the final stage, the registration. Upon registration, the mark becomes valid, and a certificate of registration will be issued by the registry. And our job here, is to make sure that all the information shown on the legal document is in order. The, 
The value period of time for a trademark usually lasts for 10 years, but it sometimes vary from different jurisdictions. And after that, we have to renew the trademark within a certain period of time. For instance, after 10 years, when the when a deadline is approaching, we will file the application for the renewal of the trademark by paying a certain amount of money to the registration in order to the registry in order to obtain the va the validity of the trademark. And also in some jurisdictions, for instance, in Cambodia, in Philippines, the registry will require the client to use the mark in the business and to provide the evidence of use in order to show that the trademark is in use for that particular purpose. And that's how we do to help the clients to file the evidence of use during the maintenance stage. And also sometimes the client may change their name and relocate the, their company to another place. And that's why we sometimes we have to assist our clients in handling the recordal of changing the owner's name and address. And if the client want to assign their trademark to a third party, like a transform their intellectual right to a third party, we will also help them to do the assignment. And my job here mainly focus on the third stage, the application of the trademark. And this is what we, what we do and what I mostly do in my workplace to help clients with uh, these uh, events. So since I entered the law field, I have been frequently asked about the reason why I want to work in the legal industry. And here are the reasons. First, I think working in the legal industry or working in a law firm or uh, even taking the legal part-time courses can actually help me improve my language skills in professional fields. For instance, you will encounter lots of lots of legal jargons when you read those uh, legal documents. The word hearing here, uh, let me have a, quiz, have a very quick uh, question. What does it mean by the hearing? Yes, yes, perfect. And how about judgment? Yes, and damages. Yes, it usually, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. Uh, it usually occurs in civil procedures and civil obligations when you uh, try to claim for the damages for some kind of remedy or some kind of compensation. Uh, usually it is referring to the monetary award. So we call it damages. How about adjournment? Uh, yes, it's a pause uh, during the court and affidavit. Great. <laughs> I believe you all uh, have taken those uh, legal lessons in the translation department. Yeah. And also you will read, sometimes read uh, the complex sentences. For instance, when you uh, study the legal system in Hong Kong and you will encounter a concept called interpretation of the ordinance. Um, this is the general rule. And you can see that this is a very long sentence, but if you study law, you will get used to it. And even if you work in the legal translation, and um, it should not be so strange to you. <laughs> and also studying uh, law or working in the legal industry can help you to nurture a logical thinking pattern. There are a lot of methods in terms of legal writings, but among these uh, methods, the most frequently used is the IRAC tools. I'm not so sure whether you have heard of this concept before, the IRAC tools. Okay. Um, the IRAC tool is the abbreviation of the following four aspects, the issue, rule of law, application, and the conclusion. That means when you, when you are doing a case studies, the first step you would like to do is to identify the main issue and statement of that legal cases to be discussed. You may find a lot of information from the facts and you may find a lot of disputes in from the facts, but you have to 
identify the main issue to be discussed. And after that, you will try to find out the rules, regulations, and legal principles that are closely related to that main issue. After that, you will analyze the rules so that it can be applicable to deal with the main issues listed above. And after finishing all this analysis, you will come to the reasonable conclusion. And that's how the IRAC works. Let me give you an example. Um, actually, this is a case study extracted from one of my assignments when I study the part-time course at the UHK. And I make some revision on it so that it can be more uh, easy to follow. This is a case about a company uh, which is trying to expand their business in the gaming keyboard. And the company appointed a director, the director name is Suki, to place the order to buy the large amount of raw plastics for the operation of the business. However, the director did not do any in-depth market searches, but simply based her knowledge on the advertisements and simply do the and simply make the decisions for her gut feelings. So this is how the problems occur. Unfortunately, later on, the products were below standard and the price was way higher than the market average. So our task here is to analyze this case by using the IRAC tools. And this is what I do in my assignment. Um, I'm not gonna say this is the perfect one, but at least I follow the standard procedure of IRAC analysis framework. So at the very beginning of my statement, I clearly listed the issue here. The, the main issue is whether the director has exercised her statutory duty of care, skill, and diligence. And after that, I will give some of the evidence to support my statements. And here I find one company ordinance, CAP 622, section 465, subsection 2, to support my statement. And I said here, a director must demonstrate a reasonable level of competence in performing his duty. And by uh, providing the rules of law, we also need to give more explanation to make the rule more applicable to the case we listed here. So the reasonable level here actually entails two major standards. One, the position of the director and characteristics of the company. And second, the director excellence. So that means the more experienced the director is, the higher expectation he or she will bear. And after that, I will apply this rule of law to analyze this case. For instance, in this case, that director bears a duty of care in her position. Uh, compared with a board of directors, she was likely to face more risks when making a decision. So she actually she should act more cautiously compared with any other person. And moreover, she, she gained certain kind of experience in that company. She's not a newcomer. So before making the reasonable decision, she should bear more expectation and do the thorough market search instead of acting carelessly like a layman. And this is what I uh, analyze my statement in this way. And finally, I come to the conclusion that Suki has breached the statutory duty of care, skill, and diligence as a director, not conducting prudent researches in management. This is how the IRAC tools works. And you can apply it in many aspects. For instance, when you enter an interview, you can also adopt this framework to organize your answers towards those questions. And I will tell you later in my final part. Another reason why I want to work in law is the process of legal careers in Hong Kong. Hong Kong is famous for being the um, international trading and financial center. But uh, at the same time, it is also the preferred location 
for resolving the disputes. We can see from the statistic in 2023, Hong Kong ran high in the World Justice Project Rule of Law Index and is the third most preferred location for arbitration globally. And also studying law or working in the law field means you have more job options. First, you can, you can of course be the legal translator in the future. And also you can continue to choose to work as a legal executive, paralegal or legal secretary uh, in a law firm or either in the in-house company. If you proceed further in law, after gaining enough work experience and after finishing all the required courses, you will be able to work as a solicitor and barristers. And do you know the difference of these two concepts, solicitors and barristers? Yes, and, do, and apart from the name, do you know the exact difference of these two characters? Uh, well, actually in Hong Kong, they, uh, the solicitors can represent the clients in some court hearing, but with a restricted right of audiences. And barrister may mainly handle the litigation in the court and have no restriction in the right of audience. Or audience. The solicitor will provide legal advice for the clients and they will handle the legal documents. So for the service, it seems that the solicitors handle more paperwork and the barrister working as a sole proprietor, they work independently. They will not set up a company to, uh, let's say, to hire someone. It's, it's a separate person and independent from their counterparts. So barrister here is a sole proprietor and work independently to handle the litigation for the client in the court. However, enter into a new industry is not always easy. And it's and and we may be faced with a lot of difficulties and challenges that we should fix. And this is the time when we have to look back on the place where we were and look back on the way that we have been. So I have been thinking how the translation can help me in my workplace. There are three aspects. Um, first, the translation has helped me to adopt flexibility and an open mind. Translation is never an isolated subject, separated from any other subjects. It's closely related to the market. And when you meet someone who speaks different language from you do, translation occurs. So as a students majoring in translation, I think we all need to adopt this kind of flexibility to embrace the uncertainty in our future of career. And also the translation has helped us to gain solid foundation of language skills. And you can see you have learned a lot legal jargons in the course in, when studying the translation, and that's good. And it will equip you with a solid foundation of your language capacity. And also the translation has helped us to nurture the ability to learn new things faster. This is a very important uh, quality that we, we need when working in the legal field. Sometimes when you enter to the industry that is new to you, you have to uh, try to use like, uh, use every methods to gather information online and to adjust ourselves to fit into that new environment. And this is how the translation will help us in learning the new things. Finally, I would like to give you some tips on CV, job hunting and interview. And I know that you have finished, you will finish your course in late April and then we will find your uh, job in the market. So where can I find the jobs? Uh, first, if you want to find a job in Hong Kong, you can uh, try, to, try to reach the referral or job hunters in Hong Kong. This is very simple. If you conduct a Google search online, the 
the most famous job hunters in Hong Kong, and you have a lot of information online. And also by referrals, uh, by alumni or alumna, and you can uh, come to them to ask for their recommendation for a certain position in the company. For instance, if you are interested in working in Deacons, feel free to come to me and I can be your referral. <laughs> yeah. And second, uh, you can also find useful information on the official websites of the company uh, because they will have a lot of job posts there. You will find the requirements, the job descriptions on the official website of the company. And also you can make good use of the online platforms um, in Hong Kong, we usually find our jobs post in about three channels. And if you want to find jobs in the Chinese mainland, and you can also pay more attention to the below four uh, channels. Those are just some of the examples that I have given to you. It's not exhaustive. It's not exhaustive. If you want to find more, you can also uh, search them online. In terms of the CVs, um, before preparing your CVs, it's very important to learn the job requirements and to read them very carefully. If you want to apply for a job in a legal industry, your CV should look different from the one that you want to apply in the education. So first you need to read the requirements. For instance, here, there, this is a job post from Deacons and you can learn the requirements there. They would like to hire someone with good language skills, with organized self-motivated and willing to work over time. It should be a very busy uh, job position. So in your CV, you can make some adjustment to show that you are capable of applying for this job. And meanwhile, you can make good use of the resources on campus. Um, at CUHK, we have CU Careers, and I'm not so sure whether you have paid attention to this before. Um, you can find a lot of seminars and uh, workshops for revising the CVs and for the guidance in the interviews. And I have once participated in one of the program and I thought it was of great help in the process of my application for a job in the market. In terms of the interview, um, apart from the IRAC tools, the most important point I would like to remind you is that before you go to the interview, make sure that you are familiar with your own CVs, with your own materials and with everything that you provided to that company. That's very important. And to make sure that all the information listed on your CV is consistent and accurate. And for answering the interview, interview question, interviewing questions, it's very advisable if you can use the IRAC tools. For instance, when you are, uh, facing a questions, you can identify the main statement of that questions. And you try to find the supporting evidence from your own experience to see whether you can apply those stories or evidence to illustrate your main statement during the interview. And after that, you can also uh, tell the interviewer about your past experience, how your how your characteristics can fit into that job positions and how does those uh, ability that you learn from your work, from your previous work can apply to your potential job position. So um, this, is, this is today's talk is about, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. Uh, thank you, Jijun, for this uh, very informative and inspiring talk. Um, I personally find the legal industry must be very intimidating and challenging. So I really admire uh, your courage, your dedication, and your hard work. Um, so please join me in giving a big round of applause to our speaker today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I would like to open the floor for questions. Uh, if you have any questions, please just feel free to raise your hand. Uh, and also for the audience online, you can uh, turn on your uh, microphone, just speak up, or you can perhaps type your questions in the in the chat box. Uh, and I think our speaker will be very eager to hear from you and to give you some insights. And you may ask the question in English and Chinese. Yes, both are okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, wait. We have a. We have. What would you like to stand here to take the question? We have a question online. What is AML checks? Okay. It's very um, specific. Yes. Do you want to? I share the screen. I think uh, you are referring to this concept, AML checks. Um, AML is the short form for anti-monetary launchment, uh, uh, anti-monetary laundry. Um, this is the checks that we make sure that our clients is doing the things properly and they are not doing something illegal. You know, money laundry is, in, is illegal. So we are doing these checks to make sure that all the procedures is conducted correctly and eligible. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, from the audience in the classroom. Uh,你是指我在律师事务所的工作？呃，没有。呃，我的 uh, oh, let me go down. Let me go back. Uh, oh, yes, yes. Uh, after working in Deacons, I I find that I I have to further my knowledge in law, so I. Then I proceeded to a part-time program at the Hong Kong Youth Space. Yeah. Uh,在这个之前，基本上没有接触过法律相关的一些知识。对。好。对，因为我当时面试的是商标的助理。然后他是一个比较支撑性的工作，他主要不会对接客户，而是帮助一些律师去处理他们的一些文件，还有帮呃客户去处理一些往来的信件。那呃这个时候他们就需要，其实需要找一个英语能力比较好的人去做这些事情
暂时不会粤语的话也，也也可以去申请这些法律相关的工作，他们也会非常的欢迎。啊，对，有有啊，有一个有一个故事是想和大家分享的，就是我刚刚在讲的时候说，呃，我们我们回到那一章，就说除了我们用这些 IRAC 什么分析框架去组织你的面试的语言，在这个之前有一步非常重要的就是你要确保。你自己所提供的这些资料是一致的，而且准确的。我当时在面试这一份 Dickens 这一份工作的时候，其实在面试之中犯了一个比较致命的错误。当时呃，公司叫我填一份表格，然后我在填填完以后，我当时可能就时间比较赶，没有去重新再看一遍。然后我其中一个工作的经历的时间写错了。其实是一个很小很小的错误，如果不仔细看是没有办法发现的。但是你知道，律师在这一行工作了那么久，他们对这些所有的证据是非常明显的，所以他一看就发现我面试的时候上交的简历和当时填公司的这一个表格是对不上。然后他当时就问了我一个非常敏感的问题，他就说：“嗯、um, ，although this is a very minor mistake, but please could you？” Give me some evidence to show that you are capable to handle this trademark executive work, because it requires detail-oriented ability. Provided that you have made a mistake in your personal profile. Oh, 当时我就是，呃，当时我后，呃，我我当时也是被愣了一下，但也比较紧张。但比较幸运的就是这个问题，我后来也比较成功的。去回答，首先是承认自己的错误，确实是在准备过程之中不足，没有去呃很好的去检查自己的这些细节。但是同时呢，我就我认为一个错误的产生呢，是每个人在工作之中不可避免的一个一个机概率的事件。所以我们更加要关注的是如何对待这一个错误，还有如何从这个错误之中去提升我们的。工作的流程，优化我们的呃复合的机制，那从而去避免在下一次去发生同样类型的错误。那当时呃面试官也非常满意我的这个回答，那后来他也成为了我的老板。Yeah. 好，首先，呃，有很多工作，他可能会需要向法律、向律师事务所，他们很喜欢去招一些有工作背景的人，有相关法律经验的同事，因为他们可能上手比较快。但是我们不可忽略一点的是，我们的语言能力，在我们在学校所培养的这些双语转换的能力，还有刚刚说的 fast learn learning things faster。这些能力其实是能够帮助到我们很快的去适应一个新的行业，所以我们在面对这些新的领域的时候，首先要问自己一个问题：我是不是真的想去这个行业去工作？那如果我真的能够说服自己去接受这一个新的挑战的时候，其实我首先要克服的是我的情绪，我不能够因为这些未知的困难而绑住自己的手脚。所以，我还是比较鼓励大家去多尝试不同的可能。对，嗯，我也补充一个小小的问题啊。首先，很高兴听到你说，觉得学习翻译对你日后在法律界的工作也是有帮助的。但是，同时呢，你刚刚也讲到，这个转换赛道确实是有一些困难的。
。那你觉得你在一开始进入这个法律界工作的时候，有遇到一些什么样的困难呢？怎么样去应对呢？呃，首先，呃，其实我觉得大部分的困难是来自于我自己对未知的一些东西的设想。一开始我会把它想的非常的难。然后呃是一个很大很大的挑战，一开始就可能说，可能就会吓自己吓到自己，但是后来当我真正去接触这些工作，比如说我真的去投简历去申请，参加了他们的面试，其实除了 Dickens， 当时我也去了一些别的律师事务所去面试，他们问的一些问题，很多时候他们不会揪着你有没有法律的背景，他们就反而会很感兴趣，对于你们。过去的一些经历之中，你能够学到什么，总结什么？所以我觉得，呃，一开始首先不不要给自己设定一个非常大的目标来吓自己，先要去尝试，去不同给自己不同的机会去尝试，去搜集更多的信息，然后慢慢慢慢的在这个过程之中调整自己对于这件事情的看法。我觉得这个是比较重要，也是能够帮助到我的。对。哦啊<笑>，有有有，呃，刚刚我对，呃，其实这一个就是我其实前几天在网上发现的一个 job post， 呃，我们很多律师事务所都会在 job CB 上面发布他们的一些新的岗位的需求 ，Dickens 最近也有在招一些，呃。像秘书之类的这种工作，所以，呃，我觉得大家都可以去，不妨去尝试。呃，当时我们我们是一个集训口译的集训，啊，对对对。但是我记得那一年好像是因为后来取消了。呃，我觉得其实所有的。反所有所有的快速的反应是源于平时的不断的积累，那同时也是，呃，比如说你在面试的时候想要有这种快速的反应的能力，就像你做口译那样，一下子就能反应出来你要怎么样去应对这些事情，其实都是基于长期的准备，你对自己所准备的这些材料的一种，呃，充分的肯定还有自信，才能够让你在面试的。关头更加的表现得更好，对，口译也是一样的，就是在每一场口译，呃，我相信很少的译者会上去裸翻，他们一定是在背后做了很多的功课，才能够有台上那么精彩的一瞬间。啊、uh, uh, 其实我觉得各有各的特点，就是呃， uh, 当时我在内地工作是。是做财务的岗位，其实是完全不同的行业，所以其实他们之间，你说对比的话，我反倒是觉得行业之中的对比更加明显，而不是因为地
因为地方不同的这一种带来的这种感受，更多的是对于工作内容还有工作行业的一种对比。像在财务行业，它需要去沟通协调，它是一个整个公司一个大盘子。当时我做的是预算的管理，但它更像是一个对于整个公司全盘资产的一种回顾，还有一个预测。那它所占的这个位置，就可能要比我现在。在法律这个行业里面看到的，它要可能更广，因为现在法律我只是专注于一个商标，就会日常会关注这些商标里面的这些细节，法律的文件它的准确性。但是当时在财务这个行业里面做，其实更加关注的可能就是他们数据之间怎么流动、怎么勾集，还有呃这些数据背后反映的一些管理的需求。我觉得更像是一种行业上的对比，呃，至于如果说真的要说内地跟香港有什么不一样，我觉得是工作的语言，首先就有非常大的区别。当时在呃内地工作，很多时候跟一些成员的项目公司去打交道，那他们都是来自不同城市，那我们经常会用普通话来交流，但是现在在香港。这可能粤语会用的相对比较多，还有英语也会用的更多呃，我觉得应该是还要继续的保持自己的语言的能力，因为当你进入工作之后，其实很少有机会有一个这么完整的时间去锻炼自己的语言的表达。我觉得这些是要在平时积累的，也很难短时间之内通过一些准备去达到的。呃，所以在这一段过程，如果暂时还没有收到一些面试的邀请，我还是非常建议大家继续。去练自己的英语，还有中文。Thank you, thank you. Uh, if no more questions, uh, we would probably call it to the end for today's talk. Thank you very much, thank you Jujing once again for this uh, wonderful talk, and hope we can keep in touch uh, for uh, more of your updates in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today.